Here's a little beaver deceiver update. Um, beaver situation update. I'm not sure if I've done a YouTube video on it. I've put it on a bunch of my Facebook and um, Instagram when I was using Instagram more often about it, especially on the stories. They may be in the highlights. I'm not sure if I've done a highlight on it or not, but I wanted to give you an update. So we've been experimenting with how to deal with beavers that are, have been always, you know, seeking to raise the level of this two acre pond. You can see these guys, there's a whole family there. And over there, there's actually two lodges now. And right now, this is actually pretty cool because you're looking at the production of about, I should know off the top of my head, but I forget. I think it was about 20 to 25 acres of landscape, the catchment basin that feeds into this pond. This is the production of that right now. And we're in an area of pretty strong snowmelt, although it's still early-ish in the morning enough that the snowmelt hasn't been occurring um, as strong as it will in another few hours, although most of the snow is now gone. Um, but there's still water trickling through the soil from a very heavy rain. We had about an inch of rain in the last well, like three days ago. So that's also still coming out here. And um, these, this is three, four inch HDPE, I think, or PVC drain pipes uh, that I had. So, you know, some of you may be wondering, well, why are you kind of cobbing this together? Why don't you use a huge culvert? That's the proper way to go. Well, I had this stuff and I'm using what I have and it's not, uh, it doesn't risk a high consequence storm event because I'm here and I'm checking this, you can see the beaver has been doing this lately and I'm, I'm, I'm always kind of tending to it. Um, so I can keep this huge spillway, which is between there and here. You can see there's a flat laminar flow promoting spillway. You want spillways to be flat bottomed, not V-shaped, a hard flat U-shaped bottom. And that width from there to there is thousands of gallons a minute if it's even coming up two inches of height and we have about 10 inches of height between that and the berm height a little more um so we had the storm event it overwhelmed these three three four inch pipes and you can see the water still has about six inches to drop to reach the level that it will stay at uh in stasis and was at for eight months last year just by going through the pipes, even when we had some storm events. But it's higher than that, so then the beaver realized he could start making some headway, or he or she, or we actually think there's a grandma beaver that does a lot of the work, and she comes up and, you know, starting to build up the berm uh, to keep the water coming up. But the water's dropping now, so that berm I'll knock down with a hoe. Um, so I think what we're learning, well, the big thing that we've learned is that this unit here as a deceiver is working. We're now getting into the year two of it working. We did an attempt at this about three to four years ago where we made one of these and the guy who made it, who was doing some work for me, thought he should cover the top, which is unnecessary so far, it seems, because he hasn't or she hasn't climbed over yet. I don't think they do that. They'd have to be carrying material, too. Um but he didn't put a bottom on it. And you can see right here, it may be hard to tell, but there's a bottom on this thing. That's key. Because even if you think you embed the, the walls of this into the ground, beavers are actually amazing diggers. It's one thing I've learned about them by working with them lately is they dig really, really well. They can actually dig aqueducts. They can make full-on tunnels through things. Now, it's good they're not doing that through berms because that would actually totally serve the opposite of their interests um, by, you know, they want to raise water level. They want as much inundated as possible. In case you haven't heard me mention this or, or read it elsewhere in like uh, Ben Goldfarb's book, Eager, which is really amazing. They are, you know, the, the, the ecological regeneration engineer par excellence. Um, whoa, you're going to fall in here. Come back up. Um, they backed up what they think is a, a, a surface water equal to like Nevada and Arizona or something crazy, like way more than the Great Lakes worth of land that's now dry on the surface was water at uh, 
contact, European contact. Um, and we've been drying out, well, basically desertifying the cotton ever since, starting with killing off all the beaver for f fashion, because the hats were a big deal. They still make the, about the best hats, and uh, I'm not opposed to using them for hats, uh, but that was obviously driven just by fad, um, popularity, image. So, um, yeah, bottom's key. They, they were just went under the thing the guy had made over in the outflows on a standpipe spillway and clogged it up uh, quickly that way. Um, so you gotta have a bottom. This is two by four welded wire fencing. I had that too. I had all the fiber posts. You know, I don't like to buy this stuff new unless needed. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two more runs of this pipe. So it just doesn't even come up in a storm event like we had. It might come up briefly in a bigger, bigger storm event. That's fine. Activate the overflow spillway. It's only gonna last a matter of hours. He or she may come out and start damming it, but by that time, then the, the pipes are gonna have kept up with the excess flow and be getting it out. So I think we may be arriving at a pretty final solution. Not gonna be final, because I'm sure the beaver will learn, keep learning as they do. I hope not, but I should probably speak quietly sometimes around them so they don't get, get new tricks sooner than they otherwise would. But basically, I think five of these four inches for this 25 acre catchment basin with a nice wide emergency spillway will, will be adequate. Knock on wood, um, knock on beaver stick. You know, and these are exposed here. Sometimes people have said, well, what, wait a minute, he could dam it here. Not really, not with much consequence because this is steep. If he dams it here, the, the water's past the pond at this point which is our concern, it's into the local creek. So he can, she can try all they want to dam here, and they do, I mean, they put material here. Uh, doesn't bother me much. It's going to the right place, even, even if they start doing that. I wonder if it, it is a he or she, or maybe it, it actually is not even either. It's, I mean, I shouldn't impose a binary on the beaver, I guess. Um, I wonder how they self-identify that's an interesting question. Probably a hard one to get an answer to. Um, this pond is up right now. It should be lower. It should be six inches lower. I don't like it this high. Um, but it's dropping. Um, but I'm going to put put two or three more runs in. Um, these are black locusts we planted. We've been protecting it from the beeve with the aluminum window screen, which is our favorite. He has knocked some down. We've planted this whole thing just to keep it as strong as possible. And he's coppicing it all for us, which is great because I wouldn't want the trees to get big because you don't want big trees on a berm because they can blow over and then you've got a big problem if the root ball comes up. Okay, hold on one sec. There's their home, one of their homes. You see, is the beaver out? And, and they've got the whole area obviously filled with sticks, which is their winter food under the ice that they eat the bark. And probably another few days we'll be gone of ice on this. Mom, can uh, so anyway, I hope everyone's me? doing well. Yeah, hold on, come right over here. And starting to get outside or hopefully continuing to get outside. Get that sun on your face. Get the vitamin D and the myriad other goodness is from sun on your body. Hopefully you get it on a lot more than just your face, especially key time of year to be as exposed to the sunshine as possible in this climate. And uh, hopefully you're getting a lot of social time with people too and fresh air because those are all needed to be healthy, even though 99% of the messaging is otherwise right now. Yeah, enjoy the beautiful spring coming in. Red winged blackbirds are back. Bunch of other birds, including some owls that seem to have not stayed the winter. Although I may be wrong about that. The Canada geese have been coming back for a while. And who else? I've been hearing a whole bunch of others. I'm terrible with birds. But like, I mean, there's probably a couple dozen new bird people that are back. Um, there was another one I just saw. I'm forgetting now, but yeah, amazing miracle upon miracles happening every hour right now in terms of plants waking up. We're about to start eating our, um, some of our perennial greens and, uh, amazing to witness the life r revive 
this time of year in this climate after such a long hibernation, you know, almost four to six months. And um, it's, it's truly a revival physically and it's also spiritually such a revival as a result. This is the two by four welded wire fencing. We only use them for the first two to five years on a tree, depending how fast they are. And then we just reuse them on other trees and stuff like a beaver deceiver. This is my son's walnut orchard. Uh, it's really just walnuts on these whales with some hazelnuts in between. Like here, you can see some. Oh, they might be flowering today. Are the hazelnuts flowering? I think they probably already did. They flower really early. Although it doesn't look like the catkins have opened yet. This is when hazelnuts flower, and usually in March. Um, little red um, male flower, and then I think these are the female. I'm blanking on it. I've known that in the past. Are these the male flowers? Yeah. Or are they the female? They're the male. Male catkins, right? And the female is the little... Um, inconspicuous flower that comes out i don't know hopefully you guys will remind me in the comments catkins. i don't know why yeah catkins they're called catkins mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a flower of a plant of a dioecious plant that has that's um no no of a self-pollinating plant <laughs> don't turn to me for for uh high school botany i used to know more than i do anyway hope you guys are all well